welcome to the Common Platform presentation about uh, vision and technology. Uh, thanks for Ludum for setting up this meeting. And we are for the video, people watching for the video, we are in the first Supernet meeting ever where we actually have a chance to see each other for the first time. And uh, hopefully we will have many more to come. And this is also going to be the first common platform presentation on video on YouTube ever made. Nice. <laughs> so, <Woo -hoo>! yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> so this presentation will be given by me first. I'm Audo, the marketing and content manager for Supernet. I will just give maybe quick in, uh, introduction and then CA333 will give more technical view. And, and here's the schedule. So at the end we will have a Q&A and in total it will be about two hours maximum. <laughs> maximum. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so now I give an overview. Next. <laughs> How many breaks? Huh? No breaks. No breaks? Okay. No breaks. Okay. <laughs> when we change the microphone, maybe then. Okay, so I made a general overview about the uh, timeline, where we came, came from, where we are going. And basically, the Komodo platform is also part of the Supernet. Uh, they are the same vision. So it really started in 2014 when the, the idea was born of connecting blockchains, solving problems, and really <laughs> like creating something that helps the entire cryptocurrency ecosystem. And uh, it initially it started on top of NXT by by James, uh, but then it somewhere in 2015 there was a a roadmap upgrade, a change. Uh, we really like had to rethink some things, and uh, and basically that's how how we end up having Komodo. We started developing a, a new Bitcoin protocol implementation called Iguana Core, and and then uh, in late. Oh, 2016, it was announced that we will have a, a coin called Komodo. Uh, and we kind of parted away from NXT. Uh, so I would say that uh, the last year was the ground, groundwork year when James was just coding really quiet. Only the believers were in the Supernet Slack and James was coding, coding away. And then things started happening in late 2016 when we had, had the Komodo ICO and uh, we get, get some more visibility uh, funding and we actually start to hire people and the platform starts to like major uh, and then now we are in, in 2017 when we are ready to roll out the first releases of, of uh, our multi-wallet and decentralized exchange and we also have Komodo, which has some features only online and new, new are coming and things are like speeding up. And, and we expect that uh, one, once we get them out to the market, we will get a wider recognition and people will notice Supernet and Komodo. And, and that's what we expected things that really take off in 2018 when we really are uh, ready and the platform is really ready and we, we get more and more developers developing on top of our platform and then then growth there in general in cryptocurrency I'm sure will happen when we reach the year 2020 and then our vision is that we are part of the core infrastructure of the cryptocurrencies uh, as we as we offer a lot of security services for the mm -hmm. entire blockchain industry okay. And 2019, 
Nothing Just growth. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here is a lead developer, uh, JL777, the mastermind behind Supernet and Komodo platform. Uh, anyone can talk to him in Slack, he's very open. Um, this is an illustration of Which him. Some people think so. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> so, it can be a little confusing what is Supernet or what is Komodo, what does Supernet have to do with Komodo? So, oh, so. It's a virus. So we, we say that the Supernet is like a horizontally uh, structured organization creating open source technology and the Komodo platform is its product. So I'm, I'm working basically for Supernet, but also for Komodo. And we have uh, a lot of products, decentralized applications such as uh, Akama Wallet and like Supernet is just the main organization and it has sub products. Uh, Supernet is not really like a coin. Komodo is the only coin, the platform coin and the blockchain. And Supernet is just an, like, like an asset that will get certain uh, revenue from the fees that the platform creates. And then I put a mission statement of what I see Supernet does is uh, open source development with a goal of sol solving complex problems for the benefit of the cryptocurrency industry. Um, and Komodo platform do does just that. So, yeah. And then I will quickly give an overview of six, six main features Komodo platform is providing. One is uh, privacy. Like there are certain problems in the cryptocurrency space that need solving, so privacy which we get from Gcash, all credit to them, to the technology. And then we have also a, a, a stability, a way to provide stable payments, uh, which is very needed, because not everything can be in doing crypto, which is, can be too volatile. And then security, how to, how to protect uh, secure big, big chains, side chains, and uh, uh, so, so that is what a lot of people are talking in the cryptocurrency space even today, like how to, how to, how to secure some weak chain because a strong, stronger chain could potentially attack against it if you are talking about proof of work. And then also scalability. We have our own scalability solution or proposal that we are working on. It's called peer chains and then smart contracts if we want to go like beyond just money, so we, uh, the cryptocurrency space needs smart contracts too, and we have our own unique way to approach the smart contract thing. And, and then easy development is, is what has been the vision of, of Supernet from the start, to allow developers to really focus on developing instead of solving something like scalability. So we are like trying to provide all the basic things for them so, so they can focus on development. And we also have uh, API for developers to use and to connect to our, our innovations with just a decentralized exchange. Um, and that was really everything I would say as an introduction and next CA double three or oh, developer and security expert will give a more in-depth view of the technology behind those six points that I showed. Great to be here. Thank you for your uh, patience. <laughs> Let's start the technology part. That's why I don't have it. Good. So what, what are we developing? May, may you, some, some of you asking? One, two, three, four, five. Everyone. Okay. Every, everyone knows. So, okay. So explain me. <laughs> How does a blockchain <laughs> Okay, and cool, uh, really. C yeah. Could you explain me what a blockchain is from your point of view, of course? A blockchain is a way of storing information uh, in this centralized way and, is, yeah. and uh, make it so that it's unable to change by others. Okay, okay, cool, yeah. 
basically that's that's already what a blockchain does. <laughs> cool for that. So yeah, it's it's uh, from a technical point of view, it's it's just a Merkle tree based data structure. So like the blockchain uh, exists of uh, different blocks, which each block contains uh, information of the previous block of the previous Merkle. And that's what makes a blockchain out. Like he said, nobody should be able to fake data that was stored in the blockchain. Maybe transactions or, or data in form of up return transaction, it doesn't matter. It should stay there and not like uh, Ethereum did with a hard fork. Okay, so let's go over. First of all, what I'll... Okay, cool. So basically we're talking just about Komodo now. Uh, we have a Zcash privacy. It's a zero knowledge uh, snark transaction system. Um, yeah, uh, explained in an abstract and simple form. It's just a way of sending somebody coins. Before you send it to those, to the, that person, they get like destroyed and uh, reinitialized and recreated at the entry point of the receiver. So that that is basically the the one and only real coin privacy uh, which is, is available at the moment. Uh, it, it's, it's the only one, yeah. So all other coins which, which claim to have a 100% anonymous technology, it's just pseudonymous. It, it, there is a way uh, theori theoretically to, to, to just uh, find out who made a transaction. Good. And we have the delayed proof of work system. Uh, the de depot system is what uh, makes Komodo out. It's a unique uh, implementation which James developed. Uh, basically, we have uh, notary notes which uh, who do uh, store uh, block information from Komodo on the Bitcoin blockchain, thus uh, securing the Komodo blockchain with the hash power of Bitcoin. Um, in the end, uh, notary note uh, just um, mines a block, uh, T takes information of this box. Not every block gets notarized. Also important to know, I had lo a lot of people at the expo thinking like we are running a parallel blockchain on, on Komodo and on Bitcoin, but that's not the way. We have, uh, we have uh, nodes in, in, uh, in regular uh, areas which, which get stored on the, on the Bitcoin blockchain. We have the Komodo currencies. In the end, there are uh, yeah, side chains, there are set chains which, which uh, are created on top of Komodo. And um, inherit Wireless all. Coin? For example, yeah, it's it's the best example. So wireless coin, a huge project running at the moment, is also such an asset chain running on the Komodo blockchain. Uh, has a very dedicated team behind it, and yeah, it, it's it's a cool project, worth a look at. Good. So we have uh, mentioned before the Komodo currencies and uh, peer chains, like uh, further implementation of a sidechain technology on top of the Komodo blockchain. And the thing we uh, recently started working at are the smart contracts. Uh, basically the basal work for smart contracts and smart decentralized organizations built on top of the blockchain, on the Komodo blockchain, the Komodo platform, let's put it like that. Good, so the main innovations Atomic Swap Protocol, uh, the feature and, and uh, the basal technology used for the native decentralized exchange uh, James just rewrote. Uh, I didn't have a chance to check the codes yet, but I was introduced into the functionality. And it's pretty genius, so in the end you're able to, to mark or flag a non-spent uh, output and uh, reserve it for an order, but you're at the same time able to spend this output, your order will just disappear if you initiated such a decentralized exchange order. So in the end it's something like Schroeder's cat, Schrodinger's cat. So it lives and it's dead at the same time. And in this example you have a, a, a value which is spendable but at the same time parked with, with an order. So it's just a projection of reality and it's made pretty good. Good, delayed proof of work already mentioned. So in the end, the main feature, security feature of Komodo, we are storing our block information into the Bitcoin blockchain, just to repeat it again. Iguana Core, and now, now we're getting to the more interesting part. I Iguana Core in the end is the, the, the basal framework which Supernet provides. So our vision, the vision of Supernet from the beginning was to connect all the blockchains together, to create interoperability, 
between different coins and different blockchains. And that's where Iguana comes uh, to play. Uh, Iguana is a client which uh, just uses some sort of lightweight network to, to communicate with different coin protocols. We have, we, have, we have a huge list of supported coins, just to name some. Komodo, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, really Bitcoin Dark, the list is long, so I could keep mentioning a few coins. And I Iguana allows uh, you to interact with those different blockchains in a very simple and abstract way. Like you could just use native functionality of your operating system, like with curl requests or HTTP requests and communicate with this layer. You can get, an, for example, a Bitcoin address in no time, send coins to this address and forward them to, to another address without synchronizing the whole blockchain and doing this and that. Now, a lot of people say, okay, we have already, we have light uh, wallets for Bitcoin, for example. Yeah, sure. But you don't have this interoperability between 10 different coins at the same time. This is really where Iguana yeah, is some, something special. So I was at a hackathon three, four days ago, and we created a, a vending machine control interface based on a Raspberry Pi. We, we, we installed Iguana, built it on our RAM device. We added a Node.js based uh, graphical user interface. And in the end, we had a, a cool, pretty nice little device with uh, different payment options. You could choose between Komodos, Bitcoins, ETH, and Litecoin. And once you choose, for example, Komodo, there were two different price classes, one euro for non-alcoholic drinks and two euro for the alcoholic drinks. And it uh, immediately generated a, a, a recipient address via Iguana, showed you that. You could send the transaction. And then the payment poll started. It started listening on that address if a payment came in. And once you sent those Komodos, in, it had at least the minimum transaction fee. It got confirmed immediately and you were able to initiate the coin signal to the MDB pro, uh, interface. That? Sorry? With that? With the ledger? No, we did it by mobile phone. Yeah. We did it by mobile phone, yeah. Smartphone. Real communication? Sorry? We'll come to questions later. All right, yeah, just, just one simple uh, use case or more complex use case for the Iguana protocol. Another one was a team at this same hackathon at the local university uh, created a decentralized exchange with a web interface based on Iguana. So really cool stuff is possible. And again, back to our vision, so like connecting all these different blockchains and projects and coins together. It's not just a lot of work, it's difficult because there are different ideologies and different uh, thoughts, different people, different characteristics. But we think with Iguana we couldn't only connect those blockchains and projects, but also the developers, create some collaborational platform. And it's already happening. So we, we've been in a lot of events and we, we're doing a lot of collaboration contracts and agreements with different projects and it's, it's really very exciting. Uh, for example, just to name some, one of the hugest mining companies in Prague mm -hmm. partnered with us. We have the Dow Casino, um, also working on a collaborative base. There are a lot of other uh, small companies. I think Otto can uh, tell you a lot of, we have Loyal Wealth, I think was the name of the Switzer yeah. um, Finance Investment Management uh, Corporation. So that there is really happening a lot, also a lot behind the curtain. So you're not aware of just every step we do and that's happening just by the time. Okay, so let's move further. I think reach my 30 minutes already. Good, so now to the main innovations. Good. Jumbler, I'm not sure if you're already aware, but it's, the, yeah, it's one of the main innovations we're, we're advertising about. Jumbler in the end, is, it's, it's like, a, let's explain it simply, it's a mixer. It's a coin mixer. It's a, I think you all know coin mixer IO or bit mix IO or whatever. There are like 10 clones of those bit mixing services which are centralized. So in the end, Jumbler's difference to those centralized services, it is running fully decentralized at your local client. So in the end, what you do, you take Bitcoins, transfer them into Komodos via our native decentralized exchange system. At the end of this process, you transfer them to Komodo, again via this, this uh, decentralized exchange system. Now you can make use of the shielded transactions, those zero knowledge transactions. So you, 
you just like destroy and send them again. They get invisible. Nobody could track or trace those coins back. And at the end of those process, you repeat it in the other direction. Like take those Komodos back to Bitcoins and you have fresh, non-traceable Bitcoins. So that was a feature we were advertising at, especially the fees. So with us, you, you basically, you don't pay fees. You, you, you pay the transaction fees if there are some, but that's it. So we're not charging any, any money for that. We're just making a native function. And now again, just to, to, to close this gap, those functionalities I'm, I'm talking about now, any asset chain or any coin which is implemented on top of the Komodo platform inherits those functionalities. So it could just make use of it, just get added as, as to the depot asset list and, and could fully make a uh, function of it. Good. So we have the decentralized random number generator, also just very simple without going to further detail. It, basically, it's a, it's a generator for random numbers based on the blockchain, like the blockchain delivers already random data. Why don't we take this data and make use of it to create a random number generator? And that could be made use of at different projects like casinos, gambling sites, dice sites, poker, Pangea, all based on, on this technology. And yeah, more to come, more to come. That's just the beginning. Good, now, yeah, just, just some words about this. Um, basically, it should show you how a project could be created on top of the Komodo platform. Like, you get an idea, implement it, create your asset chain, launch an ICO on top of our platform, and once you're funded, you can move away and realize your project. Like, like we did. So, as long as you're enthusiastic, competent, <laughs> technically skilled, it shouldn't be a big issue. Good, so we could go over to the next. Good, and the benefits. Yeah, like mentioned again, you have uh, native interoperability between different blockchains, everything free, open source, you have a huge community. We have like three to 4,000 users in our Slack. So there's really a lot going on and it's climbing, it's climbing. So every day I check the counts and statistics, all is going up, apart from the Komodo price. All, really, all numbers go up. So, well, and we're keeping the, the development. We are very active. We're expanding currently. So uh, we're, we're, we're just moving further. It's, it's just the beginning, like, like mentioned before. Good. And yeah, maybe just to, to mention again, like Komodo doesn't have those scalability issues Bitcoin and other coins have. So you're aware of that. That's also a cool feature, a native feature we, we provide. And we have a decentralized price feed. Also, just to keep it very basic, it's a functionality which uh, delivers you a price of different assets via the blockchain. So you're not depending on centralized services, but you have a rather decentralized way of getting information. Okay, cool. Thank you, Lou. We can go on. A little vision. Now some words to the vision of Komodo. Well, we have the atomic swaps, like mentioned before, the an option to exchange coins decent, in a decentralized manner without central entity, which regulates or controls your transaction. You you keep your funds at any moment in that time. That was the feature I explained at the beginning that you could flag a non-spent output and you can put it in an order. At the same time, you can sp just spend it and send it to somebody. Your order will disappear. So we really made a cool way of, of integrating this functionality. And so based on the Komodo platform and Supernet and what's coming in the next month and year, there are really no limits in the, in the, in the sense of implementations and... and use cases. Good. Well, yeah, that's something uh, and everybody of you should already know that, that tokens, so uh, in the decentralized way, like cryptocurrencies, will be anywhere at some point of time. Um, uh, often a lot of people don't get the, 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 the basic idea behind the blockchain or how this works. And I always try to explain it. I always come with the example that you could even vote for a politician with cryptocurrency. You could set up a wallet or second wallet for the second politician 
distribute the same amount of coins to every citizen of that country and let them send that coin to one of those politicians. And you will have a 100% transparent way of just proving that that politician is really voted for and not elected, not just, just like it's happening in our everyday society reality. Good, so far we could move on. Good, so the growth we are awaiting and the economic is awaiting from the Komodo and Supernet platform is that, that we are sure that there are a lot of, of businesses going to, to be created and like a phoenix out of the ash of something, it, it's, it's going all to be created off the blockchain. Because we think uh, the blockchain, like, as the basis in a decentralized and non-fakeable way, transparent and uh, especially available for anybody, uh, any human person, uh, any human could, could access the blockchain, read data off of it without paying anything. And that is, that is the main sign which should show us the capabilities of that system. It's like a virus, you can't destroy it. You would have to shut the internet down to, to, to put this away. And so there's, there's a lot of new things coming, a lot of new capital going to be invested into this area. And yeah, I think about this capital marketing related things, going to open the discussion later again with Auto. So I'm more the technical. Can I move on, Ludum, please? Okay. Um, now to a very interesting point uh, I mentioned earlier that we started working on the topics uh, decentralized uh, contracts, smart contracts and decentralized companies and organizations. And uh, we already had a discussion uh, like DEFCON, me and, and Auto, and we're talking about uh, the why and the what. So in the end I start this section just with a basic example which should explain you the whole system. So, Let's say me and Pity Trader want to launch a company, okay? I'm going to start or to, to buy in with like 200 Bitcoins and Pity Trader will put in 300 Bitcoins, okay? So the best way to, to, to accomplish this in, in a way without having to be worried about uh, spending the funds for wrong things or getting robbed by your partner or whatever is to set up a decentralized organization. We could clearly define the, 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 what we want to do with that company. We could define what the initial investment, the initial capital is, for what it will be used. Let's say we have an, uh, an office, we have to pay a rent for it. Let's start just very basic. Okay, we have an office, but that's it. That's the, the only things we have to pay for each month. So we set up a smart contract, which is funded with our initial investments. And each month at the date X, a special amount get deducted and transferred to the person who rents at this apartment. This could be implemented in a very simple manner on top of the Komodo platform. And this is what we are actually working on. So there are still a lot of things to be done. Like we have to implement some sort of scripting language, some sort of syntax, some sort of uh, anything to be able to project ideas in a... In a in a Turing complete way on top of the blockchain. Like uh, Turing complete means just that you are able to implement any function, any logic on top of the on, on top of the blockchain based on the Turing logic. Good. So I have a question. Please, please. Why, why is it uh, different on Komodo and uh, Supernet as in Ethereum? Mm -hmm. So it's not not. Well, first of all, um, just from a technical point of view or overall also? Uh, technical. Just technical point of view. Well, um, basically we're comparing apples to peaches or <laughs> grapes or whatever. Yeah. We're, we're doing it in a different way. Yeah. Like, let's say... Uh, Ether has this uh, idea with the gas, you have to fuel your smart contracts to keep them running, etc., etc. Our idea is Komodo for sure, you would have to pay some sort of initial fee for a smart contract. And you have to secure your blockchain from spams, also from running, for example, recursive, infinite loop contracts or things which, which shouldn't be done on, on the blockchain. Okay, but uh, let, let's say... 
uh, we want to implement an, an agnostic free way to uh, you could you could integrate any smart contract on top of the Komodo platform with whatever language you prefer, whatever ID you prefer, with whatever IP you prefer, and in the end, it's an alternative. Let's just put it like that. It's it's not the same, and like asking what are the differences. We haven't yet implemented this syntax or scripting language I, I, I was referring to. So I couldn't exactly tell you what the difference are going to be in a technical, from a technical point of view. I'm just able to tell you that it's going to be something different. It's going to be an alternative, another way of integrating a smart contract or a decentralized organization on top of a blockchain. So that is, that is basically the, the point. It should be more okay. independent though. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, I, that's why I asked just the, the technical point of view. Is the independence is the point of the technology. Extremely, extremely. We really want young developers, people, young entrepreneurs in the blockchain space to be able to just take our API and build something up very fast, free, without having to pay any licensing fee or any ridiculous sort of royalty <laughs> agreements or whatever. So that was the basic idea behind it. Just the goal is to connect the different projects and coins together. But so, yeah, smart businesses, like already said, there are multiple use cases, apart from just uh, assuring that decisions are, are made in a decentralized way or storing data in a decentralized way. There is a lot more to come, like the list could be endless. So, so like any business logic, we have no question like how are decisions made or where are we going to store secure data. You could ask yourself any questions and just project it into this area. So that is, in the end, that is the goal of our agnostic free and independent smart contract and smart organization implementation. Yeah, and that's now back to the vision. So. Our first vision was, or our initial vision was to connect all blockchains and coins together. And in the end, those coins and projects are located in different cities spread all over the world. And we know the topic smart cities is coming. There are a lot of projects, especially Amsterdam is, is really, is, is the prestige projects are being run here in, in whole Europe. They have a lot of sensoric integrated in the city like how are the streets being used, how is the temperature at position X and Y. And in the end, I think this is going to happen all on the blockchain. We had really interested uh, parties and representatives, for example, from the Lufthansa company. And they run like quality assuring tasks and they have a lot of sensoric data. They said it would be very cool. We're still in contact with them too implement some sort of blockchain layer where we are able to store this data, assuring it wouldn't be faked or deleted or whatever. We know in, in plane traffic a lot of stuff is happening also behind the curtains. Not, not always issues are revealed or, or published to publicity. And they, 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 they recommended, suggested such a project. And so that is where we are moving to, to just instead of running to a notary, <laughs> and paying uh, some loads of money just to get something sure that somebody saw it, who basically is just a centralized entity who could have faked it and lied. Blockchain assures this won't happen. Doesn't matter how much money you put in, you can't do it. Okay. Cool, so thank you for your, for your listening and then I'm available for questions now. <laughs> <laughs>